Welcome back. When, uh, in principle, when we prepared uh, for the conference, then we decided to look for countries uh, that have not been represented before, with countries with whom we have not had previously joint projects. So therefore, we have uh, Malta, Austria, and Slovakia, and Margit and uh, Markus, and with uh, uh, with the others, I I met only. Uh, at this conference, but uh, um, Maltese uh, colleagues are my old friends. I don't even exactly remember when we first met. Dorian is a practitioner, and uh, she has uh, represented Malta in in all kinds of uh, networks. And he, she is my Euroguidance uh, colleague. Uh, we have. Uh, a partner in every country, and uh, Dorian uh, is the one in Malta. And Stephen is also a practitioner, has uh, participated in several policy development events, also university lecturer, trainer, and uh, likewise, we, we figured it out that we met first in 2006, so um, there's a lot of water under the bridge now. But uh, uh, Malta, uh, career, learning, and development. And uh, like uh, with other workshops, uh, we will uh, hear about the, the Maltese experience and uh, for, for now. And then uh, Anna Granberg for the last 20 minutes will take over and will encourage us to participate and to share uh, our thoughts, uh, what we would like to take uh, with us uh, to home. So welcome. Thank you for this introduction, even though we didn't understand it, because it is in Estonian. But uh, there were... She, she probably said something nice about us, I, I hope, at least. Thank you. Uh, agreeing to participate in this workshop and also for the invitation here to share with you our experiences from Malta. We will start off by introducing ourselves. I am Dorian Gravina. Um, uh, I work in the Ministry for Education and Employment. Uh, I was a teacher for many years, uh, teaching also a subject which involved an element of career education. And later on, I specialized in career guidance. And now I am an education officer, um, specifically focusing on career guidance services within the schools. Stephen? <laughs> Good morning in Maltese. So I'm Stephen. Like Dorian, I'm an education officer in charge of um, a subject we call personal, social, and career development. Um, my career as a teacher started, I taught Maltese in the secondary school. And then I did a postgraduate diploma in, in counseling. And uh, I started my work in career guidance. And eventually, I became uh, a warranted counselor. In Malta, we have two routes. And we'll talk about them a bit later. And now, I am an education officer, as I said within the Ministry of Education and Employment. And, and the fact that the Ministry of, um, in Malta is both in, within education and employment, that helps us a lot to push forward the agenda of career guidance. Okay. So this is our very small island, as you can see. Um, in, the, in the map there, it's a dot in the Mediterranean, literally. Um, and it's quite different from Estonia. We came um, from sunny weather <laughs> um, to a bit gloomy weather. But um, so if you haven't been to Malta, I suggest you that sometimes you come because it's a very nice place to be. And we have a lot of history. Yes, um, as you can see, the circles there refer to the state colleges in Malta. We have 10 state colleges. A college means a network of schools, including both uh, primary and secondary schools. So uh, colleges are spread around the island according to the area. 
besides the state colleges, we also have a number of church schools, schools run by the church, the Catholic Church, and also a number of independent schools. However, as education officers, our remit uh, really focuses on the career guidance provision um, provided within the state schools. However, we collaborate also with the church and the independent schools. And very often what happens is what is introduced in the state schools is taken up and also uh, implemented within the church schools and the independent schools. Um, it is good to know that within these colleges there is what we call a psychosocial team. So basically within these teams there are different professionals which are specialized in, in their areas. And one of the specialities of personnel is career guidance practitioners. We make a distinction in Malta between personal counseling and career guidance practitioners. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so uh -huh. yeah. the aims um, of this workshop is we would like to share with you some of the work that we do with regards to career education and career guidance. The aim is to highlight a few um, interesting practices, let's call them interesting practices that we do in Malta in the different year groups, which can give you some insight into the work here in Estonia, which um, from these two days, you are doing a very good job, but obviously it's always the idea of improving uh, the career service that one is providing. And we also, Stephen and I have worked on a framework uh, which includes not only the curriculum aspect, but also uh, complemented by the career guidance aspect. So we would like to introduce to you also this framework. Which you have a copy on, on the table. And, and then we'll talk about some examples related to career guidance. So to get an idea um, of where we come from, within the ministry, there are two directorates. One is the Directorate for Learning and Assessment Program, which basically, um, from where I come from, it basically takes care of curricula, development of curricula, um, interviewing teachers, recruiting new teachers, evaluation, and things like that. Um, I, I, as I said before, am the education officer with my colleague um, at, at Malta, taking care of personal social and care development subject. Uh, and the subject is compulsory from primary to secondary. And as you can see, there are three aspects within the subject. The uh, idea of development, the development of the self um, within a social context and development of career competences, okay? Teachers of PSCD are qualified in the subject. Um, so like you have English teachers, okay, which are qualified to teach English, we have a course at the University of Malta that qualifies PSED teachers. Um, complementing the curricular aspect is we have the Directorate for Educational Services, which refers to services provided to students um, the, uh, re regarding the personal development. So we have the counseling services, psychological services, social work services, youth services, and the career guidance service. Um, uh, we, my responsibility as an education officer is to ensure that there is a career guidance program in each college, uh, starting from the primary, um, continuing on to, to um, compulsory education. And um, uh, the idea is that we have, that there are career guidance interventions within the schools uh, with a variety, face-to-face, uh, -face, group work, also complemented, I will go into this later on, uh, complemented by external resources. We heard yesterday the importance of um, employers. We give a lot of importance to the support that employers give, uh, talks they give uh, to students, um, uh, career exposure experiences, um, and also we have the support of the uh, Public Employment Service, the PES, who collaborate um, incredibly with the ministry. Because since we are in the same ministry, there is a lot of collaboration with the Public Employment Service, 
who um, believe a lot in the importance of career guidance. We were discussing with Margaret earlier um, how uh, this collaboration with, with the PES uh, occurs. Um, they believe, the, the PES uh, believe that uh, career guidance is important. It is a preventive tool and because career guidance can lead to uh, economic benefits, you know, with students then choosing rightly and not uh, changing jobs because obviously this leads to more economic benefits. Um, within, but I'll explain later on the type of interventions we organize within our schools. So um, within the Austria, I was impressed with the careers uh, coordinator role. In Malta, we also have this role. We call them career advisors. You have a career, a qualified uh, uh, level seven qualified career advisor in each college. So uh, she or he would be the person who coordinates the career guidance work within the college. Um, and the career advisors are um, complemented, the work of the career advisor is complemented by that of a guidance teacher. A guidance teacher is someone who teaches a subject, but she or he would also have um, guidance responsibilities. So uh, the career guidance teacher also has the possibility, gives lessons, so she has a lot of contact with the students, so that is very beneficial. So she or he would be the first contact point for the students. And then when the career, the guidance teachers feels that the student requires more in-depth help, career guidance, he or she would refer the student to the career advisor. So there is a system of support um, for the student coming not only from the career guidance aspect, but also the curricular aspect, which will go on into more detail as we go along. So as I said, PSCD is a compulsory subject from year four, so students would be around seven, seven, eight, mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. eight. Uh, till year 11, so till compulsory schooling when uh, students are 16 and then they go on either to work or to post-secondary institutions. Uh, and career education is part and parcel of this program. Yesterday we heard how important it is, is this to start from, young, from when they are young and as you can see we start in the primary. Um, obviously we focus on, on the self, more on the um, social aspect, but we go also in, in certain aspects related to work. For example, um, the work we find in the community, how the work in the community contributes to the society uh, around us. So we have um, um, certain aspects that talk about work and careers, obviously according to the age of the pupils. Um, the program is developmental, so you can have uh, one topic or outcomes that can be repeated in different years, in, in, so in different intensity and depth, okay? The classes, as you can see there, are generally not more than 17. This is, uh, um, in, in, in the collective agreement, this is uh, statutory. And generally, when possible, the, the students sit in a circle. And the idea of sitting in a circle is that they have a chance to participate more. There is equity, and you can do more group work, and there is more time for reflection, basically. Um, so, once again, complementing the career, the curricular component is the career guidance programs we deliver in schools. As a definition, we adopt the international definition of career guidance, uh, referring to services intended to assist individuals in order to make choices, education and training choices, but we specifically focus more on teaching them the career management skills that students nowadays need in order to manage their careers. So it is more uh, focusing on giving them the um, employability skills needed to navigate in today's uh, turbulent labor market. As Stephen said, the program uh, starts from year four, from the primary level, 
uh, we believe uh, it was quite a struggle to introduce career guidance in the primary schools. We had had teachers who uh, were, were quite resistant to the idea, what do you mean? We're going to teach students what, about work and about what they want to do. This is too early. It's too early to introduce such concepts. It was, believe me, it was quite a challenge. But um, when you implement um, a program in one school and then um, there is talk that ah, the students are enjoying the work, it is seen as beneficial, then there is a ripple effect, there is a positive ripple effect. And we uh, give a lot of focus to career guidance in the primary. And the work is, is obviously developmental, it, it caters for the different needs of the students. And as I said, the focus is on uh, um, uh, teaching, you know, the, the, for the acquisition of knowledge, skills and attitudes. One of the things we find um, that works is that you start to work with someone who wants to work with you. So if a head of school is willing to introduce certain program, you work with that head of school. Eventually, as Dorian said, other heads of school um, learn about the program, learn what is happening, parents will talk about it and say, why in that school that program is being implemented and in ours is not. And eventually, you get the ball rolling. And it could be the advantage of a small island where what happens in one part of the island, the other part of the island get to know, you know, quite, quite quickly. So, yes, uh, we tend to use that uh, way of working in our local context. Um, in, in PSCD, uh, in the secondary, we have introduced what we call a reflective workbook. Uh, these are examples, and we have copies here, of um, work um, career-related re um, lessons. Obviously, the teachers um, prepare their own material as well and adapt according to the needs of the students. Some more examples. So as you can see, we uh, do not only develop skills and attitudes towards the world of work and career, but we also uh, need to teach students, for example, how to write a proper CV, okay? um, how to present themselves during an interview. So these are all important aspects for children, especially when they leave school and decide either to continue studying or, to con or, or start working. In our PowerPoint, we have left a link and you can get access to, get to these um, uh, workbooks. So uh, perhaps you will distribute the, the PowerPoints later on and you can see uh, these workbooks um, at your own time. Okay, so um, I have highlighted a few examples, I said interesting examples from the uh, career guidance programs that we deliver in schools from the primary um, uh, years. Um, one of the, uh, we start in year five with um, class-based sessions where we get students to think about what they enjoy doing, what they like doing, what hobbies they enjoy, uh, what are their aspirations, and you get students who want to be footballers, who want to be astronauts. We do not discourage students, we help them to dream. Um, and we do we, no, nothing special in the primary, but we get them to dream, but then to help them realize that um, what uh, the importance they give to education will influence the type of um, career path they will take. So we'll try to associate what the link between what is happening in school, um, the, 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 uh, even how important the school, the importance they give to school, we try to associate that with what they could be doing later on um, as a career. Um, we also um, do fun activities like drama activities where we discuss employability skills. There you can see um, the characters of Minions who discuss what it means to be employable in today's labor market. So we try to be a bit creative with, with the young students to engage them in the sessions, obviously. Um, then with year six students, uh, year, six stu year five students are about nine-year-olds. 
uh, year six students are 10 euros. This is the last year of primary schooling. And there we get students thinking about the transition to secondary schooling. So we help them to understand what it means now that you're going to do secondary school. They have to choose a language, so we start off together with the PSCD lessons to introduce them to decision-making skills because they are now starting to make decisions even as young as uh, ten year, nine and 10-year-old students have to start making decisions. Okay. Um, when it comes to this secondary education program, um, the secondary education program is um, uh, more structured. There, within the primary sector, there is some flexibility as to the program which is delivered in the colleges. What happens in one college does not necessarily mean that this will also occur in an, another college. When it comes to the secondary uh, career guidance program, there is more structure. For example, um, one of the, uh, an, an important decision is, is during year eight, when students have to choose options. We have over 30 options that students can choose, and this can be daunting on a 12-year-old student to choose which subjects she would like to study for the remaining years in secondary school. So we organize activities, talks, fairs, um, uh, to help students to get the skills to choose subjects, which they will need these skills later on when they're choosing subjects at post-secondary education, at university. So we focus on uh, provide, giving them the opportunities to develop these skills. In Malta, we have uh, introduced uh, a new um, educational reform, My Journey, which has provided students the opportunity to choose vocational subjects. And this has strengthened our CMS teaching because these vocational subjects have work-based learning. So the, with, with these subjects, students tend to, to have lessons not only in the classroom, but also at the place of work. So there is a strengthening of, of, of CMS. Um, other examples include in the year nine, we introduced the career learning portfolio. I could not uh, give you a copy because it's in Maltese, but it is for students to uh, have the opportunity, have a tool to reflect on the career learning. Because many of the, very often students go on visits, they go on job exposures, they listen to talks, but uh, sometimes all the information is you know, forgotten. So we have this tool which provides them the opportunity to reflect on what they're learning, and then the, the guidance practitioners would call in the students, discuss them with the students. Sometimes this exercise is also uh, organized, with organized in collaboration with the PSCD teachers, so it is a tool for reflection. So as the student was saying yesterday, it's not enough that you bring an employer to the school or today to take the student to a visit on a workplace. Um, you have to give him the opportunity to reflect why he is going on to visit the place work. What the employer is saying, is it relevant for me? Um, so there is this element of reflection, which we believe is essential when you are doing career education and career activities. Um, in year 10, we do a um, very um, exhaustive exercise. Uh, we have uh, 2,300 year 10 students in our state colleges. And we ensure that each student attends a one-week job exposure at the place of work. And this is a very demanding activity. But as um, Anthony Mann said yesterday, students need contact with the world of work in order to understand uh, what it means to be an architect, if I want to be an architect, a plumber, a an engineer. They want to see, they want to experience um, uh, the work. So we give them this opportunity. This, uh, the organization of this initiative is on one hand, it is uh, organized nationally. 70% of the placements are found nationally. We have, a, I, uh, under uh, uh, my remit, there is a small unit, and we collaborate with national entities. 
um, um, in different sectors, in the financial sector, ICT sector, um, engineering sector. And we meet with these um, entities, we explain what the aim of this exposure, and these entities find employers. We try to make the, as, as, as Anthony Mann mentioned yesterday, try to make the experience for employers as easy as possible. We also um, uh, help them because sometimes employers do not know what it means to receive students for a whole week. What, what, what shall the student do for a whole week? Do I ha does he have to run after me all the time, follow me all the time? So we share our thoughts, we share our experience, is how a job exposure can be organized at the place of work. And 30% then of the remaining placements are found by the colleges because very often students may have specific um, interests. So it would be the college which um, uh, organizes. And, and this is a process that starts. First, we ask the students what they want to, to do, where they want to go. Then, as you can see in the picture there, Mock interviews are done, so those are two employers themselves who are doing mock interviews with the students, and they assess the students, mm -hmm. and then they give them feedback. So it's a process um, that leads then to the work exposure. When we started this, um, I, I started it very, I don't know when, in my college, um, it was very difficult to convince employers to accept 15-year-olds. Obviously because even of health and safety issues, responsibility, um, so it doesn't come easy. But you have to work and work build um, trust. and build trust. And now the employers realize that it is also beneficial for them as well. Um, so the employers, you have to convince them to be on your side. That it's worth, you know, receiving and, you know, it, it is quite a burden. A whole week um, hosting students is quite a responsibility, let's put it that way. Complementing this experience is a reflective logbook. You have, you have your, a copy. On your it's in English and multi, so we left you a copy. And once again, we believe that reflection is the skill is the key to learning um, career management skills. So there is reflection on before you go for the experience, reflecting during the experience, um, getting feedback from the employer, from the mentor at the place of work, being accompanied by a career guidance practitioner who comes to visit you at the place of work. There is supervision at the place of work. Do, we do not leave a student for a week out on a work placement without visiting the student. So there is a lot of uh, complementing support. Okay. It is a lot of work, trust me. Um, for the elder students, then there are fairs to introduce them to uh, the, um, the opportunities in, with regards to courses, etc. I think we have a video now, a short video, uh, to give you an idea of a type of activity we organize locally. Subtitles. <laughs> In this video, we have experience that is the same as the other people who are in the same way. We have a lot of finance, a lot of scale, a lot of things. We have 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 a lot of things. We that type of exposure, we have an offer of opportunity to students who have completed career flex counts, young faculty, and to help them to 
شامه اليوم في الفطور This activity is um, held during the week, but also in the weekend, so that the parents can also come together with the students to see the different opportunities um, that exist for year 11 students. So these would be 16, 15, 16 year olds that would finish their compulsory education and do what we have, what we call the SAC exam, and then they have to decide um, where to continue studying or whether they would go into employment. Um, as you can see, a lot of activities um, happen. Um, however, um, we, have, we are now going to talk about a bit the framework. And all this comes from the Education Act, as you can see, that um, gives importance to career guidance and counseling. Okay. Um, okay um, uh, one of the major policy framework which brought a change in Malta was the framework here, the Career Guidance Policy for School in 2007, which took quite some time to be implemented. But um, it brought a change because it introduced the teaching of career education within personal and social, it, before it used to be called personal and social development. Then we got careers into the subject, so now students are entitled uh, to a career education from the primary. And it also brought a very important change. Um, whereas, I don't know if this happens in your schools, but when, uh, within schools, very often, more attention is given to the personal needs, personal problems, family problems of students. And very often, guidance used to be resolved to dealing more with the personal issues of students. And career guidance was being sidelined, given less importance. This document ensured that career guidance and counseling are separate uh, professions. So um, the career guidance from uh, the time that this policy was implemented was being given the right, uh, the amount of time the, um, needed in order to obviously organize all these activities. So within our schools, we have uh, professionals, we have a program related to career guidance and also uh, professionals, counselors who deal with the personal issues of students. So it brought this separate division of personal counseling from career guidance, giving more importance, more agenda uh, to, to, to guidance issues, career guidance issues. The other two documents basically are um, National Curriculum Framework, from where the Learning Outcomes Framework was issued, and um, where the career education learning outcomes um, are elicited. Um, we thought of doing this reflection, but I think we can skip this because we reflected on about this yesterday, okay? And I think, how much time do we have left? 20, 30 minutes. It's okay. So basically, we talked about this yesterday, the importance of why we uh, should... 20 minutes, why okay. should, we should talk about work and careers. But as practitioners, you know, very often we are immersed in our work. We go on from one activity on our, to another. But we believe on the importance of sitting down and reflecting um, on, on questions. More than Alu, Rasti. Reflecting on these two questions. Why and when should schools teach about work? Why should schools develop a strong career learning development program? So it is, it is right. And yesterday we had the opportunity to sit down and reflect why is it important to teach students career management skills and not to keep on doing things as if, you know, you might need to change, you might need to reflect on what you are doing. We are aware that there are changes in the place of work, new trends, new contract of employment, and the labor market is changing. We are all aware of these uh, issues. We, uh, Anthony Mann yesterday highlighted them. So we have to keep this in mind. And in a small island community like ours, um, working trends change very quickly. And it's very, very difficult to uh, forecast what type of work or careers 
uh, there will be on, on the island. So that is why it is important to teach skills and the right attitudes rather than giving a lot of information. As the case in, in, in Estonia, it's, it's difficult to predict what students, what careers uh, are needed in 10 years' time. So when you're uh, working with students in the secondary, so that's important. The focus should be more on teaching the skills rather than giving them information, which will be obsolete in just a few years. Uh, we'll just um, uh, discuss, just discuss. Maybe. Right. Um, and just give you maybe just a few minutes to think about what topics would you include um, in, in, a, in a, car a curriculum for schools? What, what topics would you think are important uh, that students are, that you discuss with your students uh, regarding to career education? You can discuss can... a bit between yourselves, with... two or three minutes. Yes, some ideas. Yes. All right, Tahsin. Huh? Taib. I think we should try. Okay. Okay. Any ideas? Maybe one from each table? Yeah. Ma saan aru, et mõtted on väga palju. I understand that there are many uh, ideas, but uh, we have a request, one idea per each table. And I'll start right from here. I had one idea that has been bothering me or has actually created a lot of questions for me in my everyday life with students, and that concerns neuropsychology. Uh, awareness, ability to develop your ab ability to uh, develop your ables, because students close, they say, mathematics is not my thing, my parents didn't understand physics, I am not going to study Russian. So from very early age on, students have this understanding that I can learn just about anything that I want, but I only need the right strategies, because I can see problems that if there is awareness, including uh, the support from teachers, then I think that our students might have more opportunities. Uh, that uh, I, I can see in my everyday work that uh, students have uh, this understanding from an early age that win themselves and uh, and uh, have strategies to combat with them. So, we are changing languages, so please uh, keep your headphones close to you. Well, the next table. We think that one important skill or or topic would be uh, the ability of critical uh, the skill of critical thinking in this um, influx of information this galore of information that reaches students and also also teachers and career specialists uh, the child the student should be able to find the important things from that huge junk of information So critic time management skills, this is very important. 
And I think this is this is something that we have emphasized in career guidance. I need to think what I need to do in short term and in planning my long term activities. Communication and teamwork. Uh, practical experience or gaining practical experience from very early age, more practical experience that is. Uh, Self-analysis skills. We also mentioned uh, time management skills, time planning. We thought about reflection skills, but since it was mentioned already, then I think it's holding on or consistency or continuity. We need to support consistency, continuity, so that all this reflection and everything would work. Everything is so clever, but ex prompt, I'd say, encouragement skills. How to encourage a four-year-old to think about choices. Where is my grandmother working? What are the professions that I know? And this can be done through play and games. So the skills to encourage very young children. Job interviews. One of the things that that most people lack is attention to detail. Mm. When I'm employing an accountant, I cannot impose somebody who does mistakes, not even five percent. It's a lot of work to correct them. And one of the things that um, may also help to defeat the challenge or overcome the challenge of um, constantly changing world is techniques of effective learning, of speed learning. Very good. OK. You deserve a round of applause. Very nice. All very valid topics, which you, I'm sure, will see included in the topics that we discuss in Malta. These are some of the ideas we came up and some of the things we do in Malta within the career education program and, and within career, career guidance. guidance activities. So maybe those what you wrote there are somehow included in the, all those things. Now we're going to pass on to the framework. As we said, and as you saw, we do a lot of activities and a lot of work. However, we never had a framework that encompasses everything together. Um, and we wanted to develop this framework as a continuity of what we already have and to um, encourage also the idea of a whole school approach. So, um, we looked at different frameworks, which uh, most probably are familiar with, uh, the blueprints in the Canada, USA, um, the, uh, Australia, Scotland. So we did not reinvent the wheel because you tend to see the same teams coming up in these di different frameworks. Um, and as Stephen said, the idea was to integrate all the career learning occurring within the school context coming from the subject of PSCD, from career guidance, from subject lessons, because very often there are uh, work topics, work-related topics in home economics, in religion, in social studies. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to, to integrate um, and to encourage and integrate the whole career learning within a school context uh, to achieve better coordination between, what, uh, uh, between the different stakeholders within the schools so that there is more an integrated approach to career learning. 
We wanted also to establish some national guidelines. Uh, we do not have a um, career guidance strategy, unfortunately, to date. So we wanted to at least have a, a framework uh, for the school context, education context. And what we also wanted to, um, we believe a lot on reflection, even when it comes to practitioners. We wanted a tool to evaluate the work that is being done within the schools. We'll discuss this further. So um, this whole school approach includes these uh, professionals within the school context, the, ourselves as education officers, the career guidance practitioners, which, who are various, the guidance teachers, the, the teachers who teach PSCD, but also we wanted to include the senior management teams in Malta, uh, the head of school, the assistant heads, they have a major role in what type of programs are implemented within the school context. So, so we wanted to get them on our side, to include them in this um, framework. Um, so this is a, a whole school approach uh, towards career learning. We included also subject teachers because and sometimes subject. Teachers, like an English teacher, would be doing how to write a CV. And he won't maybe realize that he is helping in, in students in care management skills as well. And very often what we find is, I don't know if it happens here in Estonia, there is a, some fragmentation. What one is doing in, in, we don't know what's happening, you know, what is happening in career guidance, what is being taught in English. They are doing CV writing and we are teaching CV skills. So there is this lack of coordination, even within a school context, you know. So in this way, um, the different stakeholders teaching career learning are aware of what is happening in the different areas. This is the, uh, we divided the framework on the three um, learning areas. One related to personal exploration and management competences. Um, personal knowing oneself, uh, interpersonal skills, um, being self-aware, knowing your strengths, your weaknesses. The second learning area is the learning exploration, as you said, um, the importance of knowing uh, your, your studying style, how to study, how to learn. Okay, we find that that is perhaps, that needs to, it's a skill that needs to be taught. And it's a skill that if you develop that skill, it will help you throughout your life. Uh, understanding the relationship between school performance and your future choices, um, making educational choices in line with your aspirations. And the third learning area revolves around career ex exploration. Okay, so I know myself. Now, what are the career opportunities available? Um, what, 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 is, what is the world of work? What opportunities are there? So these are the three areas, which you will find are very uh, similar to other frameworks uh, internationally. The context, as we said, is um, the primary, uh, starting from the primary, moving on to the secondary school, to compulsory schooling in Malta. Uh, compulsory schooling is until 16 years of age. And as... Uh we said before, we um, believe a lot about reflection. And even when, within PSCD and within the career guidance programs, um, teachers tend to use what we call um, the experiential learning cycle. I don't know if you've heard about it, but basically the idea is that you have the activity, which is the concrete experience, okay? Then there is the reflection about the activity, um, and how um, the activity helped you and the reflection helped you to arrive at a certain uh, decisions or ideas, new and then a new learning, and then how you can transfer that to life outside the school. Um, and this is a reflective process that even um, as teachers, when teachers are uh, at university and learning to teach, we teach them to use this cycle even for themselves. So when they are teaching, for example, during their teaching um, experience, they have to reflect, and because it helps them to improve their practice. 
And this is something that we use during the lessons and the activities. Um, did I did? The framework has a lot of, um, how do you say, I, um, things that we want to see and evaluate. So um, we have five elements. elements. We have the clear. curriculum goals, what outcomes we want to teach, basically um, what content is important, um, how it is best taught, okay, how it best to assess that, this and is the, the problematic part, but we think that the reflective uh, part is the best part of it, and how do we assess the program? And as we said, in the programs focus uh, on knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So uh, it's a process, the syllabus, you have the outcomes, um, framework syllabus, and it's a process that leads you to reflect and maybe even change something within the lesson or the syllabus or the activities. Um, uh, so besides the framework, we wanted the f to have a tool for the, um, uh, all the, the um, those stakeholders involved in the delivery of career learning, a tool to reflect on what they are doing. And we um, outlined four areas for reflection. And these are four categories for reflection. We want the school to reflect on the type of career education program being provided. We want them to um, reflect and evaluate the career guidance provision, the career guidance interventions provided to students whether they are really adopting a whole school approach or whether there is still some fragmentation um, between the delivery in the different areas. And we also wanted to evaluate um, the professional input of the practitioners. Are the, are the practitioners keeping up to date with labor market developments? Are they going for training? So these are the four categories that we would like the, the schools to evaluate to ensure that they are providing a coherent, integrated, and relevant career guidance, career learning and development program. Um, and this is, once again, this is a reflective model which, as a practitioner, one can use to reflect on what you are doing, because as I said previously, sometimes what happens, we do the activity, uh, we, but we do not find time to sit down and reflect on did, my, did this activity have any impact of this, on the students? Is there any need to change any of the way that it was organized? So there is an element of reflection. So it's what happened, what were your feelings about these activities? Was, was it a good or a bad experience? Um, the idea is then um, to improve, if need be, to improve the experience. So it's a cycle of reflecting on what you are doing and even uh, finally doing an action plan. So what was positive, what needs to be done, what should I do next time, what should I change? So it's a, once again a, a reflective uh, cycle which helps you to improve the delivery of career learning. Okay, so here, as you see, these are the four categories um, for reflection and evaluation. Each category div are divided into five elements. And um, we are going to give you an exercise, in fact, so that you, you can e even make use of, of this tool. And the idea is that as a school, um, we believe that this, this reflective exercise, there, there needs to be a leader. There needs to be someone from the school who uh, would be responsible for uh, organizing this evaluation experience. Otherwise, we are aware that if you leave it uh, for anyone to organize, it will not be done. So we believe that the right person to organize such an evaluation system would be, in our case, we call her the career advisor, the person who is responsible for the coordination of career guidance within the school context. So the idea is to hold meetings 
uh, with all uh, involved in the delivery of career guidance, and to use this tool in order to reflect at what is happening in schools. So each category has different elements. In your, on your tables, we left you a reflection, reflecting on the whole school. And we have to... We have... Um, uh, the, the ones in red? The, the ones in red. We have taken the example of reflecting on the whole school approach, whether the school is really adopting a whole school approach to career learning. And we would like... We have some a few minutes, Margaret. We would like to give you a few minutes to... Um, to, to look at to look the mm -hmm. elements that are there in the, in the whole school approach. As you can see, every um, how do you say element, element has, has been divided into, into three, into three evidence. statements of evidence. And basically, it's a self-reflexive tool. Um, and you have to see the elements within each um, um, okay. a, a, a category and say whether these are excellent, acceptable, or needs to improve. And then, when this is done, um, the school or the career advisor, together with the school, has to make uh, an action plan because it's futile to, to reflect and say, OK, this is working and, and this is not, and stop there. You have to say, if this is not working, what is the action plan to improve? that um, activity or that uh, input. So for example, um, outcomes to be achieved, access information is accurate, current, relevant, and accessible. So this is something that the school thought it, is, it needs to improve, okay? So action, and the school would have decided that the website needs to be checked for information and updated. Uh, who will do it? Okay, the career guidance practitioner. Um, how it will be done, who will lies in with the ICT officer in the school, and obviously if he needs additional resources and, he, uh, and a deadline, so it will be done. Because if you don't have a deadline, uh, sometimes things tend to, to be left on the shelf. So do they have time to do the first okay. part? No? Okay. No, okay. They can do it at home? No, no, it's okay. They have an example in, 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 uh, on, on a handout so they can see it on, in their own time. Okay, so I think... Uh, These are references we do. Okay, so we have a number of references which you can refer to in your own time. Thank you for your attention and hopefully it was insightful um, uh, and, and helpful for, your, for yourselves. Thank you. Going to take questions now, or questions now. Or um, thank you very much, Sur Sur Dano. Are there any questions now? Are there any questions? Are there any questions now? Yes, there are. The first question comes from here, and then two questions. Thank you very much for sharing your work and your theory and experience. And especially grateful for the uh, full school or entire school strategy for having elaborated it. So what it was in a sense and who were included in this preparation work and who is implementing it. Thank you very much for that work. No. Sorry, because I'm confused hearing the translation. Um, we are meeting with, um, in, in Malta, colleges are, um, uh, are, are headed by principals, college principals. So now we are meeting with college principals in order to share this framework. We are meeting also with union members. Um, in, uh, in order to, to share this framework. We are also having meetings with the career practitioners, with the subject teachers. So these are all um, uh, meet stakeholders. stakeholders involved. Because unless you get them on your side and you, they show them the validity of, of, of this work, um, this framework can just be a booklet which can be put on the shelf and not used. So yes, we are having a lot of meetings with the different stakeholders to inform them 
of uh, each and everyone's role. In fact, that's why it's, it's still in draft, because we want to consult as much as possible different stakeholders before we, we make it public. Um, so that they will realize that we want them as partners. We don't want to impose something because as you know, when you impose something, most of the time it's, it is not carried out. So we want to have a discussion, we have the framework, it's ready, but we are ready to change according to the feedback we get. And we start off by assuring them that we are not inventing anything new. This is what you are doing in school. We are just recording it and getting an integrated approach. Because when you go into schools and to teachers you tell them you have to start doing something new, in Malta, you get the union, the teachers' union. Ah, you can't introduce anything new. You have to, you know. So first thing that we do is we assure them, listen, this is what you are already doing in schools. We just want some reflection, some integration of the work which is being done. And we want it also very badly because we have a tendency in Malta to, to introduce things, but we never evaluate and analyze if they are effective. <laughs> and we continue to do the things, and, and we know that they are not working. But we are afraid to say, look, we need to reflect and change these. So this um, may be, um, we change this mentality also. We want to bring a bit of change also in the way we do things. Thank you. The second question was, about the week's practice in the uh, companies, the students go there. And I understand that the students' interest and motivation is taken uh, into consideration. And what is uh, the kind of response from the company? And how does this uh, work in uh, that the youth and companies agree? Agencies meaning, for example, with the Financial Services uh, Associ um, um, Authority. These are the large associ um, entities in Malta who would have, uh, for example, in this case, with regards to the financial services, who would have the financial companies as members of their association. And they would entice employers to participate in these, um, in these job exposure experience. I can't say it is easy finding placements. It is always a challenge. But once you, um, I think, you try to make the experience as easy as possible for the employer. Sometimes, as I said previously, employers are not sure what is expected out of them. So uh, we organize a lot of meetings with the different entities to explain what is, what is uh, required from their end. We provide a lot of support too. And once you gain the trust of the employer, I think, um, those two aspects, um, there, there, there is a continuation then of uh, offering other placements uh, the following year and, you know, and encouraging other employers, even, you know, talking uh, when, they, when these uh, large organizations have meetings. Um, they sh some employers tend to share the examples of good practice and em other employers become aware of what is happening in other countries. There is obviously these companies also um, uh, publicize what they are doing. So this is something positive showing that they are hosting students. And remember, these are students who are 15 year old, so they need co you know, constant exactly. supervision. What we also do is we ask students as well if um, their parents have a, a type of business or a shop or a factory and whether their parents would be willing to offer uh, opportunities for the students within the school. So we also try to use the community of the school and sometimes even uh, where places that surround certain schools. Uh, in the picture you saw one which was working in a bakery. So that was um, in Maple, yes, Maple, I think. Yes, that was an organization close to the school. So we use a lot of the community, the places of work within the community. To arrive here, it took us 
almost years. 10 years. years. So it's not something you build overnight. It takes time mm -hmm. and effort and, and uh, resiliency sometimes. Thank you so much. Kas kellegil on veel mõni kiirem küsimus? Et siis, aitäh. Thank you. Thank you. Ja hea oleks nüüd... It would be good to have, to ask two things. So, to draw conclusions from the presentation and what are the valuable ideas that would provide uh, uh, food for inspiration in Estonia. And uh, the second thing that you have your own uh, work diaries where to document the best outcomes. And I request you to discuss in your tables uh, what would be the best practices, what you have heard here, uh, so worthwhile developing further in Estonia, and what could be the next step for development. So a couple of minutes for discussions, and please uh, share your outcomes after that.
I will collect the ideas and yep. maybe some for you. And I also wanted to say that I sent an email to all of you to the Estonian website where we have the program and all the links to the presentations from yesterday and today. So everything is now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of discussion, but I hope that you could come forward, each table I mean, with one other ideas or comments. So Margit would walk around and uh, just share the mic, but I will document. So we liked very much the, the kind of work shadow program for a week in the companies. We understand that it's difficult to implement, but it was very good idea. And yesterday there were a couple of numbers as well. Dorian mentioned yesterday that when he started uh, the program of a week's practice, then there were 50 companies involved in this program. Was it so? Dorian? Companies for one college, just for one college. And we have 10 colleges, so that would be around 500 employers involved uh, for all the colleges. And what we do is that um, the weeks are spread throughout the, years, uh, throughout the year. So one college would have one week in the first term, then the, the, the following week there would be another college. So we might have the same employer uh, providing placements to different colleges. And that is very challenging when you have, for example, um, placements for four colleges, you know, throughout the year. It's very demanding on the part of the employer. Thinking that the small uh, Malta, uh, there are 500 employers who are involved in here. And I will continue. We have... Uh, actually, the work shadow days, not a week, but week is, is very exciting. Is there a kind of a training program or, or information sharing with the, with the companies, or is it, is it uh, the kind of voluntary based on mission? So, whether... Could, uh, what about the the feelings? Do you do you provide training to the employers? What we do is we meet with employers to explain um, uh, the outcomes we want from the experience, the one week experience. Um, very often, also we provide them with a sample program, um, uh, and you know just. For example, giving them some ideas that it would be ideal if they're in the um, health sector that they would um, be exposed to the different departments. So there is a yes, there is support, and and we also have agreement forms um, uh, outlining the responsibilities of the employer. So we try to make things as clear as possible. The responsibilities on the part of parents because there is the issue of health and safety. Uh, there is the issue, um, uh, you know, in, in of, of which companies to accept. And for example, when it, we are very careful with regards to health and safety. For example, students uh, who are interested in certain areas uh, are. It might be difficult to send them, for example, in, in a building construction site. So. We are very careful uh, the, uh, also which placements are offered to students. With regards to students, we also hold sessions during PSCD to try to encourage students to explore different options because very often young youngsters tend, are, are not informed about the different career options and they tend to go for the traditional jobs. We want to challenge gender stereotyping too. So we, all, we prepare also students for this experience, um, help them to understand what their interests, what they wish to explore. 
Sometimes we get students who, after wanting to go to, uh, to explore a particular career, for example, I remember one student who wanted to attend uh, a job exposure in a hotel as a chef. And after the whole week, he said, I am not sure I want to go into this career because I am so tired, it is so stressful, so demanding. So um, then there's time we reflect a lot. I mean, even if the student decides that this is not the type of career, the, the right career for him, I think that was a lot of learning involved. So there's time, then that there needs to be time for reflection with the students. Also, time for reflection with the employer. At the end of the year, we meet with the different entities and the employers to get feedback. How was their experience? What other support they needed from the schools? So yes, it, there is, uh, it involves quite a lot of work. We, okay. Um, you just the last, we also, we also ask for parents' consent. So the parents have to sign that their child is, for that week is not going to school, but on the workplace. That I think is very, very important. So we have one hour lunch break also. So it's, uh, we have to follow the time frame. And then please think whether we can add something to the frame. Uh, cooperation in school is one key word. And in Malta, it seemed to be excellent. But in our schools, it is it's lacking efficiency. And just knowing what my partner or colleague is doing, especially. And another interesting thing so keeping record book. So it is interesting that young people through different experiences and also from grade to grade movement that there's a kind of self-reflection or self-analysis record and uh, it's possible to uh, to assess the the process in Japan for example there's a career passport and it could be excellent if in Estonia we could think about it and implement similar thing to add to the work shadow program. When I worked in school, then I completed that. And I want to encourage my colleagues all over in Estonia that, that I did not encounter a single employer who actually flatly would have turned me down. Uh, all my connections were positive, and that could be a big dream in Estonia that to enhance and to, to contact many employers as possible. So let's draw conclusions now. So the practical experience and cooperation in schools were the, actually the burning points here. <laughs>